Welcome to the Deep Dive. You know we love finding those little nuggets, those shortcuts that spark that aha moment. Definitely. And today we've got a really interesting one. It's about uh, a pretty unusual way to handle Proxmox VE8 clustering. Yeah, we stumbled upon this thing called Tailmox. It's basically a script, yeah. right? And it tries to cluster Proxmox nodes across, well, potentially huge distances using tail scale. Which sounds kind of crazy on the face it of it. It really does. Because, you know, the kicker is... It's completely unsupported, not officially recommended at all, but the reports say it actually works. Sometimes. Yes. That sometimes is doing a lot of work there, I bet. Uh-huh. It difficult our eye. So for this deep dive, our mission is pretty clear. Figure out what Tailmox actually is, how it supposedly pulls us off, what you might gain from it, and maybe most importantly, right. what could go horribly wrong. The risks. Yeah, the risks are significant. Let's maybe start with the core problem Tailmox is trying to uh, yeah. get around. So standard Proxmox clustering, as most listeners probably know, is really built for nodes on the same local network, same room, same building, you know? Right, low latency is key. Exactly. There's this component, Chorusync, that manages the cluster communication, the heartbeat, and it depends, like really depends on super fast, super reliable connections, LAN speeds. Anything else, like routing over the internet, just introduces too much delay, too much... Uh unpredictability precisely high latency is the enemy here it's like trying to have a i don't know a perfectly synchronized orchestra over a crackly phone line doesn't work so what happens when that latency creeps in with remote nodes well bad things you can get split brain situations that's where parts of the cluster lose contact with each other and they both think they're in charge it leads to chaos data issues yeah, nasty yeah then there's losing quorum quorum is like um the minimum number of nodes that need to agree to be online and talking for the cluster to make decisions safely drop below that. And the whole thing grinds to a halt. Or worse. It can become unstable, unresponsive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you might even see ghost nodes popping in and out. Just general instability. Okay, so that's the mountain Proxmox clustering normally doesn't climb. How does Tailmox try to, like, tunnel underneath it? Right. So the hack, if you want to call it that, involves tail scale. Tailscale is a mesh VPN built on WireGuard, which is pretty solid. I've used Tailscale. It's pretty neat stuff. Creates like a private network overlay. Exactly. It sets up direct peer-to-peer uh, -peer encrypted tunnels between your machines, wherever they are. So it essentially builds a virtual LAN across the internet. Ah, okay. I see where this is going. Yeah. Tailmox uses this virtual LAN created by Tailscale and tells Proxmox, hey, look, these nodes are all local, even if they're, you know, continents apart. It's tricking Coruscant, basically, making it think the latency isn't there or isn't as bad as it is. Kind of. It's providing IP addresses that Proxmox can reach, even if the underlying connection is way slower than Coruscant expects. And the claim is, it sometimes works. Surprisingly well, even. Yeah, the source mentioned someone running this setup across continents. Yeah. That sounds wild. It does. The anecdote was uh, a seven-node cluster. Five nodes were local, but two were remote, one in the EU, one in the U.S., ran for over a year, apparently. Whoa. Okay. And the latency, did they mention that? They did. Reported round-trip times between 45 and 64 milliseconds. Which, for Coruscant, should be way, way too high. Right. That should break things. Under normal circumstances, yes. Absolutely. That's usually deep in the danger zone for cluster stability. Okay. How? Is it just sheer luck? Or did the Tailmox creator build in some, I don't know, safeguards? Or maybe just lowered expectations. I think it's more the latter. The approach seems very pragmatic. They explicitly state, no high availability, don't even try it. Okay, that makes sense. HA is super sensitive to timing. Right. And also, no overly aggressive assumptions about uptime. It acknowledges that nodes might drop off because, well, it's the internet. So it's not trying to be a bulletproof, always-on, geographically redundant cluster in the traditional sense. Not at all. It's designed with those limitations baked in, which leads to the kinds of things people are using it for. Ah, right. What were the examples? Moving VMs. Yeah, that was one. Moving VMs between geographically separate sites. But crucially, this assumes you've already replicated the data, probably using ZFS send receive. Tailmox just helps manage the Proxmox side of that migration, the final handover, maybe. Okay, so it's not live migrating huge VMs across the Atlantic in real time. Definitely not. Think more like uh, planned, coordinated moves. 
The other use case mentioned was managing containers and backups more easily. How so? Well, because TailScale handles the networking, you don't need to set up complex site-to-site -site VPNs like IPsec or OpenVPN just to get your nodes talking for management or, say, backing up to a remote Proxmox backup server. Tailmox integrates that TailScale network into the Proxmox cluster view. Right. Simplifies the networking layer, even if the clustering itself is fragile. Exactly. Fragile is a good word. Which brings us squarely back to the risks. We need to spend some time here. Absolutely. The sometimes works part. What happens when it doesn't work? The biggest danger, highlighted repeatedly, is that reliance on stable latency. Stable-ish, anyway. If your <laughs> internet connection to a remote node gets flaky. Jitter. Packet loss. Latency uh, spikes. Yep. Any of that. The connection destabilizes, and boom, you risk that split-brain scenario again. Nodes lose contact, get confused about the cluster state. Very bad. And the source was crystal clear. This is not for production. Like, seriously, don't do it. Absolutely emphatic on that point. Unless you are an absolute expert in Proxmox, internals, core sync, networking, and you're willing to accept catastrophic failure, mm -hmm. just don't. It's a home lab experiment. A what if cool. Mm -hmm for people comfortable with things breaking, basically. Totally. It's for tinkering, for learning, for pushing boundaries in a non-critical environment. And it's fascinating that some things do seem to work, even if they shouldn't, like live migration. Wait, live migration? I thought we just said that was out. Well, mostly. But the source mentioned one specific instance where it reportedly worked. Had to be a VM that was already fully replicated via ZFS, and the latency stars must have aligned perfectly. So like a one in a million shot? Pretty much described as a miracle. Definitely not something to rely on. But it shows the weird edge cases this setup enables. Okay. What about other things like uh, ZFS replication itself hmm. or cold migration backups? Those seem more reliable, based on the reports. ZFS send receive over the tail scale links apparently works fine. Cold migration, shutting down the VM, moving it, starting it up that's generally solid. Okay. And using Proxmox backup server, maybe located at one of the remote sites, yeah. and backing up over the tail scale connection. That also seems to be quite reliable and efficient. So the less latency sensitive operations tend to fare better. Makes sense. It does. And maybe we should clarify what Tailmox, the script itself, actually does. Yeah, good point. It's not like a replacement for Chorusync or anything. No, no, not at all. It's really an orchestrator. It automates installing Tailscale, configuring it. Then it uses the standard Proxmox command line tools, PFCV, to create the cluster. But it feeds those tools the Tailscale IP addresses. Gotcha. So it just handles the setup and joining process using the Tailscale network instead of the physical LAN. Exactly. It smooths out that initial configuration. But it doesn't change the underlying Proxmox or Chorusync mechanics. And importantly, it only works for creating new clusters. Right, you can't just point it at your existing cluster and add a remote node. Correct. As of the source material we looked at, it's only for bootstrapping a brand new cluster using Tailscale IPs from the start. Adding nodes to an existing, maybe LAN-based cluster isn't supported, maybe in the future, but not now. Okay, so let's hammer home the caveats again. If someone's listening and thinking, hmm, maybe for my non-critical home lab, what are the absolute must-know warnings? Number one, no AJ, forget high availability. It won't work reliably. Got it. No HA. Number two, quorum is critical. You need enough nodes online and communicating. If too many nodes drop off local or remote, doesn't matter, the cluster can become unresponsive. You might get locked out of the web interface. So you need to maintain that majority connection. Yes. And number three, maybe the most crucial practical advice, backups. Do not rely on backups stored only within this geographically stretched cluster. Have off-site independent backups. Seriously. Absolutely critical. If the cluster goes sideways, you don't want your backups trapped inside it. Precisely. And the overarching caveat, don't even try this unless you're comfortable with Linux, networking, Proxmox guts, and the very real chance of failure. You need to be able to troubleshoot when things go wrong. Right. So despite all that doom and gloom, people are experimenting. What's the word on the street? What actually works relatively well in practice? Okay, so based on user reports and experiments, cold migration seems solid. Shut down, move, power on, works. Good. ZFS replication between remote nodes also seems to work well. Necessary for those cold migrations, usually. Mm, makes sense. Backups to a remote PBS server running over the tail scale connection. Reliable, efficient even. Okay, those are useful things for a distributed home lab, potentially. Definitely, but then you get to the tricky stuff. Live migration, Again, a miracle when it works. Don't count on it. Right. Unpredictable. 
HA breaks easily. Anything over, say, 50 meters latency or significant jitter, and it's likely to fail. Expected. And a big one. An unstable network connection on any node can destabilize the entire cluster. It's all interconnected. Yeah, that single point of failure or multiple single points of failure over WAN links. Exactly. Though, interestingly, there was a note that if you do lose quorum, sometimes just booting up another node if you have one available can bring the cluster back online. Okay, so maybe recoverable sometimes, but definitely not smooth sailing. Not smooth sailing at all. Which brings us back to why? Why does Tailmox even exist? What's the point if it's so fragile? Yeah, that's the philosophy behind it. It seems clear the creator isn't trying to say, this is the new best practice. It's not about replacing proper redundant links or enterprise solutions. It's more about enabling experiments. We're the home lab crowd. Exactly. For people who are curious, who maybe have a couple of servers at different locations home, maybe a parent's house, a cheap VPS, and want to see if they can link them in a more integrated way than just separate Proxmox instances without spending a fortune on dedicated links. Just got that hacker spirit, doesn't it? <laughs> they said it couldn't or shouldn't be done. Let's try. Totally. It's about exploring limits, seeing what's possible, even if it's not advisable for serious workloads, that what if factor. And I guess it also serves as a lesson in understanding why the official recommendations exist, right? Yeah. It highlights the importance of low latency for coursing. Absolutely. It demonstrates the boundaries. And credit to the creator, they are very upfront about the risks and the experimental nature. It's positioned as a tool for testing, for learning, not a production deployment strategy. So wrapping this up, Tailmox, is this the future of distributed Proxmox clustering? Uh, almost certainly not, no. The inherent limitations of internet latency and the design of CoreSync make this fundamentally fragile. But is it a fascinating, clever, and under the right circumstances, surprisingly functional way to play with remote nodes using TailScale, especially if you like poking at the edges of tech? Yeah, I think that's fair. It's a very clever hack. If you enjoy tinkering, if you understand the risks, and if you find the idea of linking remote Proxmox nodes intriguing for non-critical stuff, it's a really interesting project. It shows ingenuity. It definitely works sometimes, even if it shouldn't. Right. That's the charm, I suppose. So the big takeaway. Tailmox is this cool glimpse into what could be possible, bridging distances with Proxmox using Tailscale, but it comes wrapped in huge warning labels about the risks. Driven by curiosity, great for experiments, terrible idea for anything important. Succinctly put, be aware of the trade-offs, always. Which actually leads to a thought maybe for our listeners to chew on. Thinking about this balance, you know, convenience versus reliability, tail mocks versus best practice. What technical rules or established best practices do you find most tempting to bend in your own tech explorations? And what unexpected things, good or bad, might happen when you do? Hmm, that's a good one. It's always that tension, isn't it? Pushing boundaries versus respecting why those boundaries were set in the first place. Something to definitely think about.